and welcome to another episode of Artist Conversations. Um, each week we get up close and personal with an artist and we learn all about their stories and all about their craft. And um, this week we are so lucky to have with us all the way from Slovakia, Helga Pavelkova. Hello Helga. Hello. Hi Joel, how are you? <laughs> and so I first met Helga at Edinburgh University where she studied illustration at the College of Art before pursuing her postgraduate studies in illustration. Um, she's currently teaching, studying and doing freelance illustration work. Um, and I can personally testify how special um, Helga's illustrations have been because um, I once commissioned her to illustrate a, a picture of my friends for their wedding. Um, and she did such a beautiful piece that the couple was just so impressed. Um, and actually my own gift to my boyfriend, my very first gift to him, um, he's now my husband, was uh, one of Helga's really beautiful illustrations my favourite city, Edinburgh. So um, it's such a pleasure to have you with us, Helga. Um, please, can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm a freelance illustrator. Mostly I would characterize myself as that. But as you said, apart from that, I also teach. I teach kids um, at an elementary school and also at a high school. Uh, but I mostly do illustration for commissions or, and I do my own work as well. Um, I come from Slovakia. Uh, I studied at Edinburgh, just like you said, we met there. Um, and then I came back from Edinburgh to work here and then now study here for my master's as well, which was unexpected, but it's, it's going okay so far. Um, yeah, what else would you like to know? <laughs> um, maybe you can tell us as well, um, what, what inspired you first to be an illustrator? Right, so that is, um, I suppose I don't have such a like conventional artist story <laughs> because uh, I, went to a, I went to a bilingual high school here we call it a gymnasium, which is weird because it's a building in English, but um, like where you where you uh, exercise, right? That's a gymnasium, yeah. So we call it a, those are like um, special types of schools, high schools, mostly focused for, uh, they're mostly a little bit more rigorous in like academically rigorous than normal high schools, I guess. Uh, and they're usually selective as well. So I went to one of those. It was bilingual. So I had a lot of English speaking uh, teachers and uh, a lot of classes where I learned everything from, you know, English as in like literature to biology, chemistry in English. Um, and I honestly didn't really know what I wanted to do up until the last year. And um, I always loved drawing and I always this was something that always kind of kept me interested and um, I honestly couldn't really imagine doing anything from the subject that I had in high school. I thought, yeah, interesting, but kill myself if I wanted to, if I were to like do it more. It wasn't as interesting. It wasn't so interesting that I wanted to actually go in depth. So I thought something was drawing and the only thing that I thought I could be was either either be become like a painter or an artist but I couldn't really imagine doing that because I didn't really feel like um, I have that much to say really um, and I wanted to do a service I wanted to do something useful but I also wanted to draw so um, I thought graphic design was the was the answer um, so I applied to all the unis and I didn't get anywhere and I was very depressed. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but then that the year it was clear that I wasn't going to go anywhere. So the only place that I, I thought, okay, I need to improve my portfolio. I didn't have any art in high school. I just did it as a hobby. So I went and did like a, it's called a postgraduate degree, but it's postgraduate as in like after high school. And I went to study graphic design for two years. And that was my aim to just improve my portfolio and apply again. But actually, even before I started that, um, I got a book for my birthday from my mom. 
and uh, it was called uh, Illustration Now, and it's basically just like a thick book. I actually have it here, just a sec. <laughs> So it's this book, and it's uh, it has these like very brief reviews of different illustrators and their work. And I honestly didn't know illustration was even an option. I I had never heard of it. We didn't we didn't really have an illustration department at the University of Arts here. And I genuinely didn't know that was a that was an industry, or that was even a a course that I could study. So when I discovered it, I was like, perfect. This is applied art. You know, I can draw, but for a purpose. So I genuinely found like like this book was definitely the catalyst. And I realized that my portfolio was full of illustrations. It wasn't graphic design at all. Um, and that was that was the feedback that I was getting before as well. They were like, this is not graphic design, this is pictures, this is storytelling. I'm like, yeah, but you know, <laughs> I didn't really know what to tell them. Uh, so I found, I found the discipline for my portfolio, which was great. So I applied to, so I didn't apply to graphic design. I applied to, I knew that I wanted to go to Edinburgh College of Art. That was, like I looked up that school, I did loads of research on all the schools. I knew I wanted to go somewhere abroad uh, to an English speaking country, preferably because that was the language I knew. Um, and uh, so it was either America, which was really expensive, or the UK, uh, more, you know, namely Scotland, because they provided my uh, they provided to pay scholarships for people from the European Union outside of the UK. So loads of my classmates went as well. Um, so I applied as well and I got into a Edinburgh College of Art to the illustration department, which I didn't even find the year before because I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> um, so that's how I got to Edinburgh and that's kind of how I realized illustration was the thing that I was doing all along. I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> Great. I'm happy you, you managed to, to find, you know, illustration. And um, now that you're, you're an illustrator, what, what excites you most about the work you do? So that changes a lot. Um, and it changes, I feel like, with age as well. That's pr pretty normal. Um, but what, it do what does excite me is mostly real life stories or non-fiction i still love the aspect of um being of service with my art and with what i do to somebody else um i have uh, i've always found uh non-fiction stories really interesting though so stories of people who did something courageous or people who did something great or something really weird, whatever it is, um, I found those really worth exploring visually as well and maybe perhaps somewhere where I can tell, a, tell, tell their story in a different way. Do you have any particular like historical character or person whose story you very uh, it was it was the story of uh, this guy. He was a German guy called Matthias Rus, and he lived in the. I think it was. I think he lived in he lived in West Germany, and for some reason he decided he flew really small planes, and for some reason he decided to protest the Soviet Union by way of actually flying from Finland to Moscow and landing in the Red Square. And uh, he actually, it was, it was basically a suicidal mission to do that because uh, the Russian airspace was watched and nobody up until now, nobody really understands how he got to the main square in Russia um, and actually landed. So um, he even has stories of 
um, he explained that he actually saw a couple of aircrafts, Russian aircrafts, seeing him and thinking, well, this must be somebody allied to the Soviet Union because who would be so crazy to do this? And he actually landed on the bridge in Moscow and, uh, and uh, then wheeled it into the Red Square. So this crazy guy's story just like really captivated my captivated me or you know captured my attention and um, and I wanted to and I illustrated that story in a little comic it's a you know it's a story of like bravery and craziness at the same time and uh, was very kind of like emblematic of the times as well so that was the first time um, or the first story that I remember yeah Great story, I love that. Mm. It's so impossible that it becomes possible. It's almost quite a good yeah. life, life, life goal, isn't it? And yeah, yeah. Signature style, like, a, have you, do you think that your personal style has developed over the years? Or? It definitely has. Um, I, I, I feel like I am now arriving to a style, uh, but for a long time I didn't really, I don't think I really had one. I mean, I'm sure that you could pick my things out of a lineup if you were forced to, just if you saw a lot of my work. But um, some illustrators have a very specific, very, very clear, clean style. And I always change it somewhat to the commission as well. And it does develop with the materials as well. So um, I used to have a very detailed, way of drawing which I still enjoy sometimes but now when I make illustrations uh, for either books or editorials I usually employ a much simpler way of illustrating just so that the idea kind of pops a little more um, so for example I did a little icon about podcasting so this is a very simplified illustration compared to some of the other stuff that I would do. Um, I did some portraits during Corona. So that is still simplified, but it's a little more realistic than, um, than the one that I showed you before. Um, so yeah, definitely the, the style kind of develops and changes and really depends what I'm working on as well. Uh, I don't always employ the same one, the same style for everything. Right. And I know you mentioned you, you enjoy writing or about, I mean, illustrating uh, autobiographies or people's stories. Um, but do you have any uh, favorite themes or subjects that you enjoy exploring in your work? Yeah, so I think people mostly are interesting to me people's stories um, and also wider society as well and kind of like um, stories and, and relationships of people in a wider society you know, not just of individuals uh, yeah those are the themes that I would be exploring now um, even especially for my um, for my work in my master's degree now I'm doing a lot of that which is, it's something new for me, um, more, a little more, it's a little more, I would say political as well, I guess, which is different than children's illustrations, you know, <laughs> but um, it's, it's uh, fun to have a challenge and it's interesting to explore an area where perhaps illustration itself doesn't go that often. Um, I mean, you would have political satire uh, since the dawn of illustration, really. But uh, I would like to push that a little bit more. Uh, so I'm exploring that right now. Right. And I suppose if, if you're like fascinated by people, um, would it have been really interesting for you to have lived in so many different cities? You know, you've been in Slovakia and then you went to Edinburgh. Do you think that meeting all those different people, those different cultures, did that sort of shape your art? Definitely, yes. Um, I think leaving my own culture was really important for me to even see it. Um, I don't think that I would be able to see 
some things that I do see now and analyze it in the way that I analyze it now. Had I not left for five years to live in a different culture, and also Edinburgh was so great because even though I was living in one city, I had the chance to meet people from so many different cultures、um, because it was a student city, but it's a very international city. I think、uh, perhaps right after London, it is probably the best place to live for this. Um, because there is also a different way of teaching illustration in、uh, in the UK than it is now, than it is here and now actually. So now that we have an illustration department in Slovakia,、um, I th- think the reason why they actually it took me into the program, into the master's program, they don't really like to take outsiders, and I am. First of all, I am forever an outsider here, which is strange now,、um, and.、Uh, Even though I grew up here,、um, but also they were really intrigued in the combination of the two approaches, and they really wanted me.、Uh, they saw something in my work that was different than what they were teaching, and I can see it now when I see、uh, the work of my classmates here, and when I look at the work of my classmates from Edinburgh. There's the stark difference in approach. Like there's a very different illustration tradition in Slovakia and in Britain, and it's really interesting to be some caught somewhere in between. Yeah, that's great because you can get the best of both worlds, can't you? What What's that difference? I think that the illustration here is a lot more traditional.、Um, traditional in terms of、um, technique, I would say. So a lot of people work digitally, of course, but、uh, there is a big, big、um, emphasis on the traditional traditional graphics techniques here. Even at the school, I I don't have that like it's almost a craftsman education that the kids have here, which. I really appreciate that I can at least get a little bit of it now and a little bit of a glimpse.、Um, but in Edinburgh, or at the Edinburgh College of Art, but I would say in in the UK altogether, the illustration is a lot more based around concepts and a lot more based around ideas. And、um, and of course the styles are different as well. But、um, It is just the way that the stories are told here are very much based in the craftsmanship and skills of like the traditional techniques, printing techniques especially, or drawing techniques. Whereas in、uh, in the UK, I would say people have almost outgrown that and are a lot more interested in.、Um, The ideas and how the story is made, and the atmosphere of the characters, rather than the atmosphere of the image. <laughs> I wanted to think it shows what the creative process is like for you. Yeah, of course. So I would start with an idea. So I、uh, have, I usually have、um, a sketchbook or just a notebook that is really messy, like this one. Like you can see, ink has been spilled, <laughs> and I would just do very, very messy sketches or no sketches at all, and just do writing. So it would be just very, very untidy, and I need one that I can keep untidy, <laughs> where I can just write my ideas out. It.、Uh, They really tried to teach me to draw my ideas out in Edinburgh, but they didn't succeed.、Um, I I need to write them out before I start sketching.、Um, then I would sketch, and I would sketch mostly the composition, and I would sometimes even end up with the finished product. But、um, for example, coming up with this was a commission that I did about three four years ago.、Uh, I start sketching out. Compositions of one thing that I need to accomplish. So, yeah, very crude sketches, but just working out the the ideas, the compositions, what I want to show.
And so what I was showing you now was uh, inks. And what I do in the end is I would do like a fine illustration like this one, for example. I would do it on a really random piece of paper. And usually uh, it ends up, uh, I scan it. So I have my scanner here. I scan everything and uh, finish the composition, the layout digitally. So usually all of my illustrations end up digital in the end. Thank you so much, Helga. It's been such a lovely, um, lovely time hearing all about your thoughts and your journey and looking at some of your beautiful illustrations as well. And for our viewers back home, I'm going to link um, Helga's works in the links below. So please go and check her out. And um, thank you so much, Helga. No problem. Thank you for having me.